Hi guys, welcome to the video. This is my 950 solo on Sabbath and Song, which is this week's Nightfall ordeal. Now I didn't go for the 100k, I just went for the completion. So up until the up until the actual first area starts, we're going to speak a little bit about the weapons. I've went with No Turning Back, which is a primary bow. It's a one hit kill on all kind of red bar, ac acolytes, thrall, all that type of thing, and it's got an unstoppable mod on it. Ariana's vote obviously for barrier champions. And the Wendigo, because it's a lot of arc. Well, there isn't a lot of arc, but there's there's some dangerous arc in here. And I felt like the blinding grenades you can get from the Wendigo would be really helpful. Not just for those, but for clearing smaller ads, smaller groups of ads. So, I, as I say, I didn't go for the 100k, because real tight to get that on the 950. It's quite difficult to get the, the 100k on the 950. Uh, even with a fire team, I think the most I got was... I think uh, 105,000, we, we could have got more, but the point being that it's tight to get that score. So as I've said previously on Twitter, I am going to go for the 980, uh, but we'll do that over the weekend. I want to start knocking out these 980s, but I wanted to get my power level up a little bit more before I actually started tackling those in earnest. So as you can see, when you come to this first area, the real kind of ad you're, you're focusing on is this wizard. And that's a solar wizard, so we just t took her down low, and as you can see, the amount of damage you can do with this primary bow, it, it is pretty good. It's only its only drawback, pardon the pun, is its draw time. You know, if you went with a scout rifle or whatever in the primary slot with an unstoppable, that might do you a bit better. I Also, there's a couple of mods I didn't put on. I didn't put on a tenderizer which increases your weapon damage when you stop an unstoppable enemy. And I didn't put Void Battery on, which gives you an overshield when you put when you use Void abilities. So, once you clear that first area, you want to come over to these stairs. This provides you distance from, from the adds, and distance sometimes can be safety. So, that's, that's where we're going with this. So, these adds will push you, but the further you are away, the less likely they are to be, like, super aggressive. And you've just got that wizard. So you can see them coming, which is it's safety in itself. As you can see, I created a pull of light there because I've got Guardian Angel on, which crits with, I think, Scout Rifle, Bows, Snipers, give you a, a well of light that gives you health. You, it kind of comes up on your screen saying Cure. Uh, so it's pretty decent. Now, now that we've cleared that wave of ads, we're going to get our first champion, which is a barrier champion. So what I do as I try and take out all the ads that can... You don't really want to push this champion straight away. Unless, of course, you feel confident you can take him down before the ads are going to are gonna do a bit of damage to you. And because of the damage that the ads do, even on the 950, I wouldn't recommend pushing this champion straight away. Clear, clear a path for yourself. You know, the champion, if you're over here, the champion won't really do a ton of damage to you. He won't really bother with you the further you are away. And the other thing is, if you do kill Acolytes when you're cl closer to them, they can leave that pull of fire on the floor. That can be really bad. So, basically, as you can see here, I'm going to put two shots on a champion, and that brings the shield up. And then we've got two two shots to bring the shield up. If you crit, it's two shots to t put the shield down. Put the next two shots on them, and then... Dodge reload and you're good. If you've done if you've done the catalyst, which is something I will speak about in a future video, uh, if you've done the catalyst, you'll have the nine shots. And as you can see there, the Wendigo really takes care of those knights. I have hive hive armaments on. If you don't have them, just go and do your normal menageries. Do the first three menageries you do give you powerful rewards. They also give you the ability to drop mods. I dropped mine from normal. I know other people, quite a few other people that have dropped them from normal. So there should be no problem with that. Now what we're going to do is we're going to tether this open door. As soon as it opens, as you can see, I preempted the door open. That will grab the first couple of waves. Now, you'll see in the video, I could have got the last wave as well. But my positioning wasn't great for it. So go through this door, dodge reload to get the invisibility and back off. Because you've got two champions in here. This is your first unstoppable. Uh, and as you can see here, I just missed getting them. If I'd have been better prepared for it, I would have got that wave as well. Now, something else I wanted to wanted to mention is, is you, you'll see how much super energy I actually got back. I'm using the, the boots, the Orpheus rig. They're still pretty decent. So, you know, 
I, I, I use name it whenever I'm on, on uh, Night Stalker and I'm, I'm tethering. That's what I use. Now, I probably would have done more damage against this Unstoppable if I'd had Tenderizer on. But I'm not too bothered because I can see I've got... I do have some uh, special sitting up there. And I've got a hand cannon reserves. But I'm playing it really safe. I'm not pushing. I'm not over pushing. There's no need for me to over push. So what we're going to do is we're going to get rid of... Now that the, the, the champion's down, we're going to get rid of the, the Arc Knight. Now on the, on the 950, you'll have an Arc Knight here and a champion. So take him down really quickly two shots no problem dodge reload to get the invisibility and then two shots again now this was a little bit different because this knight moved moved a bit and my positioning wasn't great so i don't have the dodge either so a little bit different but you'll see here you know it, it's still no problem taking these knights down just keep two shots by to bring your shield down if you crit Critting actually, you know, it really, if you crit the knight when his shield goes up, it takes the shield down faster. Now that seems like uh, pretty straightforward. You know, crit does, you do more damage with crits. You'd be surprised. A lot of people don't think that, especially on, on this and especially with Ariana's vote. It's not difficult to hit the crits, but you, you have to be, uh, you have to be aware of the the kickback from the gun so just don't spam your trigger and and you'll you know time time the recoil and you should be good now another thing probably going to speak a bit about this just after this part but the reason why i've not been doing solo nightfalls as much is 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 something that we'll cover the first part right here now you have match game uh which means you've got to, you've got to match the elemental shields that are in the actual nightfall savathan's kind of strange kind of unique <clears throat> for a couple of different reasons one there are no real areas you can skip it's not set up like that the hive the hive nightfalls and the hive strikes are set up you have to fight all the enemies that's not really a problem you know, I'm, I'm not suggesting that, you know, oh, I don't like them because because the Hive Strikes are some of my favourite in the game. But when you've got areas that you have to fight through, you've got champions. The mods are set up in such a way that you can only put them on certain weapons and, you, can, you know, you can only use certain weapons to take down champions, which I find very, very restrictive. Definitely not in line with Bungie's play the game the way you want to play it and build a better monster killing machine which was the tagline for shadow keep it doesn't really feel like that to me but you also have to you've got to uh set your weapons up to take down the burns as well and that's probably the biggest annoyance because savathan is very strange in the fact that very unique in the fact it really does have just about it's got every burn and not just well there's one enemy with solar you know, there's three or four solar enemies, which are, you know, they're very dangerous enemies. There's a few of the same similar solar enemies, but with void shields. And then you've got arc. So a lot of other strikes only have two burns. Savathan has them all. So, you know, you have to rely on your subclass doing a little bit more than just popping super and, you know, taking out groups of ads. you kind of got to keep your abilities for those ads. So we'll speak a little bit more about about the the actual the actual setup of the ordeals once we get past this area so you've got a champion through here you've got five or six acolytes so clear the acolytes and then go after the champion using the same kind of two shots then two shots to break the shield and then your next two unless you've got the artifact the not the artifact the the catalyst completed and, and, and you just, you know, take them down with those shots. Make sure you're getting your crits. So you'll see here, just make sure there's nothing else. He'll always dodge after the first shot. So we hit two, two shots to take the shield down. Next two crits, dodge, reload, and then take them down. Now in this next area, you're going to have, in this next area, you're going to have <clears throat> one, one barrier champion, but you've got two ogre knights. Now, I think when you do... The 980, the, the, you'll be dealing with more unstoppables here, I'm not sure. There's definitely a, a thing on the 980 where you deal with more champions. So we, what we're going to do to start with is we're just going to play about with this ogre. 
Now, I did stop him, and that just staggered him enough that I could get a couple of shots. He will go, he will hide behind, on, on his platform, he'll hide here. So you just have to keep putting a bit of damage on him to get him to come back out. You don't want to push, because you've got acolytes over to the left, you've got a bunch of acolytes down to the right, and the champion is just down to the right. So if you stand on this box that I'm standing on right here, the acolytes won't throw the solar bombs at you, and you're free to just attack this ogre. Once we get out here, we're going to try and take the ads on the on the right and, and, and try and take the champion. So there's your first ad there. And just below, when, when you're actually, actually, when you're on that box, you could probably throw a grenade down right there and take out some ads. And because I've got the, you'll see I'm, I'm getting heavy ammo. Really got to watch out with these acolytes. That's why I'm backing off. They really can do a ton of damage to you. So I just, <clears throat> never be scared. Never be scared to... Uh, to back away from a fight i'm just trying to clear some ads here make it easier for me to attack this champion so we're just gonna head glitch the champion it's first shot second shot shield one shot dodge reload and then we should be able to take him there we go and that's him down now we've got two two arc knights as well in this area all in you're gonna have four arc knights two wizards a champion as you can see, if you can get the hit on him, break his shield. Now the Wendigo is a very strange one. It, it has a very good, uh, a very good uh, perk with the blinding grenades. I find though it does, it's not great damage unless you've got it's charged with light. Now for anybody that doesn't know the Wendigo's kind of thing, as uh, it's kind of perk is. It's got blinding grenades, so anything that it explodes near in its radius, it will blind as well. But I find that that's, unfortunately, I mean, it's it's it was a pinnacle weapon from, from the Vanguard Strike playlist. Well, the Vanguard pinnacle weapon from a couple of seasons ago. I don't find it's aged very well. If you don't have those, uh, as I say, those... Uh, charged shots those you can pick up six orbs even if you've not got it equipped you pick up six orbs you charge the weapon and it does more damage i think i'd be a liar to actually say it. i'm 100 percent sure how much it does but I, I i seem to remember it being like it's an increase of like 75 percent. so once we hit this ogre once we're just going to put off a couple of shots because we know we've got the range there but for some reason i had the range and none of those shots hit so now that we've got that, that ogre will move round to the left hand side behind it, behind the structure in front of us. There's a little bit round the left hand side it will move to, and we'll get pushed by two arc knights. So as you can see, this is what the Wendigo was built for, and it's it, I found it really strange using it because even once I got that range, I felt like the next shot never landed where where uh, where the first shot did. So the recoil must change really change its 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 position to a degree where it's it's quite hard to actually predict where where the second shot's gonna go based on where you fired the first shot from. So we've took a wizard out. We're gonna leave that wizard because it's just slightly outside our range. Eventually it will push us, but what we're gonna do now is just clear these acolytes. You see the wizard just just want to get involved. Get a dodge reload on. And get a couple of shots. There we go. So basically in this area all we've got now is acolytes and an ogre. You'll see that if you stay down here, that what I'm doing here will work every time. And it's uh, it's my mantra. People that have watched the channel for quite some time will know my mantra. Is I like to create repeatable strategies i don't like watching people just kind of yolo stuff and you know well if you run up here and if you can get up here and if you can do that no i, I want something that works every time just take up that last acolyte so be careful when you push this ogre like this just come up here use this that ogre will always go there what we want is we want to make a move to the stairs once he goes up the stairs so we'll get a couple more crits on him once he moves to the stairs, he, once he gets to the top of the stairs, you can attack him, but he won't really be able to, up here. That's where you want him. Right there. You want him there because uh, 
he won't fire at you from up there, and he's he's an easy target. So we'll just finish them off with the bow. The bow does quite a lot of damage. You can see he's he still had a fair bit on his on his uh, health bar, and the the bow took it all off one shot. So that's this area cleared. For me, we're now in entering the most difficult part of the nightfall. You're in, you're much more enclosed than you were anywhere else. So we'll just throw that smoke there, and we'll throw a grenade here. Through the smoke to the right, uh, just just to uh, you know suppress this night this acolyte from coming out because they do a lot of damage, and you do get this uh, phenomenon. It really annoys me. Uh, screen shake, and I feel like when you're getting hit, you, it's really <clears throat> it's not like you're getting uh, flinched. It's it's more screen shake, similar to what the hard light the hard light's problem is. Hard light has a problem where it doesn't recoil, it shakes the screen and it's really off-putting and makes people not want to use the weapon. Well, I find that when you're getting hit, you suffer more from screen shake than you do from recoil and it's quite off-putting. So in this area, we've got two champions. We're going to try and take down this arc enemy first. With, with I, I don't, I didn't really want to use the, too much of the, the, Ariana vote ammo because we do have two champions to take down and sometimes it can be annoying when you run out of this ammo so I've come up here because I'm right let me let me say this right off the bat if you get up here and you go after the champion straight away you're not safe right so this champion we're going to go after right now but as you can see I'm still being attacked now, I'm confident in what I can do here. If you're not, I wouldn't suggest you go after the champion. Now, we're going to get a second shield. I would suggest you take out all the, the acolytes first. Just take your time. There's no, there's no big rush here. 950, you're not going for the high score solo. So, we're just going to take out all... The acolytes are just so annoying with their the solar attack. Not just... Not just what they do when you kill them, you know, it's not just that, it's it's the bombs that they throw. You can, if you get, it's like you're being attacked with Yotuns, you know, and my problem with the Yotun is, uh, my problem with the Yotun is that uh, it, uh, it's, it's, it's not that it's OP, it's more that it's not an OP weapon, it's more that... The time you get killed with it most of the time is if you're involved in a firefight with someone else. And that's what I feel like with these acolytes. The, if you're getting involved in a firefight and they throw one of the solar bombs at you, it always seems to catch me kind of unawares. So now we've got this last champion. So the two, similar thing, two, two shots. Now I timed that shot just perfect. That shot just landed. And, it, you know, it made... The kill so much easier. And there we go. Wendigo finishes them off. I, it's really uh it's a really a strange area. This is where I think and this is where the nightfall gets serious. Because now you're in such an enclosed space. Now we're gonna have to deal with two unstoppables. Now you're in such an enclosed area that it's it's you've got to be really careful. You have to be really careful when you're attacking ads because you can you can leave yourself vulnerable. So we're going to take the orb with us. I'm not too bothered if we lose this orb. But we need to have the orb on us for a certain amount of time to unlock the enemies. Because if if I was to just run to all the enemies in that in that structure inside, won't be here if I let the if I let the, the orb disappear and go back to its starting position. The, the the ads inside won't appear. I've got to actually go in there with the orb for the uh, for the ads to appear. So we'll take down this champion. Now the, doing this against the nine fifty. This against the nine fifty. These champions. They're a little bit more difficult to take down than the nine fifty, even with the catalyst. Now that makes perfect sense because it's it's uh, you know. 950 is a uh, 980. Sorry, is a higher, uh, higher uh, uh, difficulty. 
So these ads are a little bit tougher to put down. So you come in here, you're going to have these acolytes here. What I like to do is put a couple of them down and then explode the barrel. The barrel will take out some of them that are at the back. So one Wendigo. Now there's, there is an Arc Knight down here. And as you can see, that explosion finish really hurt him. And the Wendigo finishes him off. So now if we move down here to this next section, we now will unlock the ads here. I'm not bothered now if I lose, the, the if I've got to go back up to get the the orb because now I've got the enemies and you'll see and you'll see the the unstoppables coming pretty soon they don't like to hide for too long but see what I'm saying about the the thing I hate about this area it's probably the it's probably the only area I really dislike in the strike is this area because you can't Bungie have made it that you have to put yourself in harm's way and I don't like that. I don't like that they that they, they so while we're just taking these ads out because you'll you can watch you can see on the screen what i'm doing the thing i don't like about the nightfall ordeal let's speak a little bit about that it feels like they've took as with as as they have done with a lot of different activities in destiny it feels like they've replaced fun with with difficulty now we all like stuff that are difficult we all like a grind we like a challenge but when you make the mistake as you can see there's the champion coming i was i was aware i was ready now if i'd have had tenderizer on i might have finished him there but i didn't and as you can see the acolytes are just target me so now i probably am gonna lose my orb but as i say I'm, I'm not too worried about it and there's the first major there's the first unstoppable there is another unstoppable but we want to make sure that this area is clear of these nightmares. So yeah, the, I think they've replaced. Just make. I think there's always about three acolytes inside, and as you can see, there's an unstoppable. We've just, we've just put one on. And now he will charge us. So we'll dodge, reload, go invisible, pick up some ammo, and go back up top. I feel like when you change. As you can hear, he comes, and I'm confident I'll be able to stop him. So, you know, and then when I missed the first crit, I didn't want to put myself in too much harm's way. So I just pulled back, because it's safe to pull back and be be careful. And as you can see, you just keep popping those easy peasy. Now what we'll do is we'll make sure there's no acolytes left in, in, in the room, and then we'll, we'll just go invisible and dodge. Go invisible with what dodge, sorry, and... Slam the orb, and that's this area done. After this area, as you can see, I know they're hiding, so what I do is I... If you shoot roughly where you think they're hiding... Just pop that. If you if you shoot roughly where you think they're hiding, they'll come out. And most ads will do that. If they're hiding and you shoot in the direction or on the floor where they're hiding, they'll normally come out. And that explosive barrel that you see me shoot, that would have told me if there was any more enemies still there, because it would have done a little bit of damage. So, yeah, when you when you when you change the, the move the goalposts, when you change the objectives. So I felt like Destiny was fun for a while, and then they introduced some grind, and it was fun. Now I feel like everything's a grind. Everything's more difficult. And these nightfalls, they're not so much fun because they, you know, Bungie have restricted us to what we what weapons we can use. Jeez, it actually feels a little bit like they went uh, double primary again with with the with the weapons that you can use to take down champions. And I I think making making the changes that they've made some of their PR maybe over the last six months has been very very misleading because it's really the game is like super restrictive, but. We'll cover that in a different in a different video, I feel. Now, as you can see there, I've tethered. It hasn't touched the other wizard. And now we're left in a predicament. Because we have no void. I don't really want to wait for my next grenade. Because that could be some time. So we'll try and, try and get a hit on this with Wendigo just to blind it. There you go. And it doesn't really do that much damage. So I could run out of ammo before I actually take it down. So 
My suggestion here, as you can see, now I've got to wait for my grenade, which is another issue. This match game, it's like, okay, you've got match games. Now you've got champions that can only be taken out with certain weapons. Yep, as you can see, I'm, 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 I'm annoyed at the fact that the tether never grabbed both of them. And then you've got the wanted enemies in here. It's like, you know... What, what Bungie have this thing where they it seems like sometimes they don't fix a problem, they create a new one. Instead of fixing the actual issues we have with Nightfalls, they've they've oh no we'll, we'll do some we'll, we'll bring a new thing in and now it's super restrictive. Uh, so what I would what I would have done on retrospect is when I tethered the first ad, I would have threw the grenade at the second one. Because I already had the shield down on the first enemy. So if that happens to you, because it's going to be a while before we actually, you know, because this wanted enemy, it doesn't matter if we go invisible and run past all these ads, that wanted enemy is just going to wait there. And it's a bullet sponge. So, you know, we're just going to wait this out. As you can see here, we're losing points. We're 25 minutes uh, already. We're losing points. If we'd have been doing a 980, we, we, we would still be cool. Because as you can see, you know, we're not we're not getting any more points here. I probably could have done this a little bit faster, but it wasn't about speed, it was about getting the completion. So now we've got to wait for this this uh, wanted enemy to, 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 to go. It's annoying. Things like this I always do find annoying. It's like unnecessary. I'm not saying we should have the wanted enemies taken out. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that maybe the seasonal artifact shouldn't be so restrictive to what weapons you can use, you know. Yeah, and he, if if they are going to restrict it, because we know that obviously Ariana's vow works against barrier champions, Leviathan's breath works against unstoppables, and the divinity works against overload. Well. Give us a really hard to get more. Give us a really hard quest that allows us maybe for an act, one activity at a time or a, 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 a consumable. One activity you can equip to exotics. You know, and it only lasts for one activity. You have to farm something to get it or be lucky enough to get some of these because that would be a worthwhile, that would be worthwhile uh, pursuit to try and get these consumables that allow you to equip either two exotic pieces of armor, two exotic pieces of uh, weaponry. And having a consumable means that even Crucible wouldn't suffer from, from that because you'd literally only be able to do it for one match and have them be kind of difficult to get. Not, not like impossible, but not that people could have stacks of 15 of these things and just be like burning them. Be very careful with the Explorers here, as you can see. They can creep up on you. So, <clears throat> once this, the wanted enemy has escaped, so what we're going to do here is, it's the reason why I put the Wendigo on, because Ariana's Vow works pretty good against the boss, but just not enough boss damage. Now, you can see I've got no charged shots, so we're just doing basic damage. We put All we're doing is just putting one, one uh, magazine, and we hit a few of those shots. As I say, it's... The recoil pattern makes it very uh, difficult, I think. We'll just put a grenade there. to. We want enemies to push, but that, it's, that's quite annoying. That it, it does stop them. It did do what I wanted, but I, I kind of wanted heavy because <laughs> I've got the high volumes. But I put that grenade down, and you've seen, you seen there with the throttle, they went, yeah, let's get in. No, not going over there. So now we'll just put some Ariana Vow and try and take down the last health bar. And then we'll have a heap of enemies. They'll come out. A champion. We'll have a champion. We'll have an arc. An arc knight and a champion. So what we're trying to do here is. So the boss strategy is basically. Take off a health bar. Of, of the boss. And then take out adds. You get yourself into the right position. Before the adds are clear. Because the boss. The boss's uh, shots. Can, can really kind of. They'll kill you. If, if you're not in cover, they've got quite a fast time to kill. Really, surprisingly fast time to kill. So what we want to do, as you can see here, uh, we want to take out one of these knights. So we're going with this knight. Don't take, don't, don't take both knights out whilst the acolytes are still up because the knights are what 
they are the trigger for the boss, you know, re-engaging. So I take the arc one up, and I can move up here. There we go, get some heavy. And just make sure there's no acolytes. There is one. Now we can take the, the, the champion out. Once we take this champion out, we are going to move to Savathun's position. Because that's where the best cover is. It's 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 the it's the best cover for still being able to do damage and seeing ads coming at you. So are we gonna we're gonna get another shield? As you can see, you can see there how much damage the first crit does if you if you when when the shield goes up if you crit it you'll see you see there how much damage it does. So what we're doing here now is just putting some heavy onto the. The boss, whilst watching out for acolytes and thrall. Now you've got to be very careful. As you can see, I'm head glitching. Trying to still do damage. And you, you know, you, you want to get, you want to get Savathun to move. So that's what we're trying to do is get Savathun to move. Whilst... As I say, you still have to be aware because the ac the thrall are gonna they're gonna push you. So again, as I say, you just, there's no real, real kind of special thing here. Just make sure that you you know those shots are hitting the top of this pillar. Make sure you get your crits, get Savathun to move. You want her to close up and that will bring out the next wave. So there we go. We have went in invis. A lot of ads there. Now, I, I've tried it in the past. I've tried tethering those ads. And the minute, you, the minute you tether them, they seem to scatter. So it's not like you can... You can predictably tether and just... You know, wipe all those ads out really quickly all the time. So I didn't bother doing it because it's not a repeatable thing. Now, as you can see here, I think you might just be able to see on the right-hand side, we've got an unstoppable. When you do the 980, I think these three ogres are unstoppable. So I always take the left-hand side out first. Then the unstoppable will just run across. I, f I feel as if when you take the left-hand side one, the ads choose to come out and show themselves a bit more. So you can you can also be dealing with the ads as well. So you'll see the unstoppable run right across. So I'm trying to put a little. It's just trying to get two speculative shots over on the normal one, just to just to lower the the health a bit. So basically, from here we can take everything. Once once this once this unstoppable is stopped, basically. Then we'll we'll make sure we try and take down all the rest of the the ads. I don't think there's that much left up. There's a couple. And there you go. That's the unstoppable. Now I'm looking about to see what am ammunition because now my mind is now on how easy is it going to be to take down Savathun. You know, because well. <laughs> Ariana does a fair bit of damage, but we're not talking about... It's not going to melt anybody. So I'm just going to put a couple of shots on this ogre. Just to lower the health. I don't really want to use too many Ariana because I'm... I don't know. I am... I am a little bit... Uh, when it comes to... When it comes to uh, ammunition, I am a little bit uh, conservative. I like to make sure I've, I've got full ammunition at all times. So we're confident, for what reason I don't know, but we're confident that uh, there aren't any more adds up. So now I'm just trying to do a bit of damage. We'll just put some Wendigo shots in. And this is why the <clears throat> this is why I used the Wendigo. I felt like it would be better than the 21%. 21% is a brilliant machine gun. <clears throat> but as a... As a boss kind of killing weapon, eh, not so much. It's not so good. So what we're going to do here is we're going to take out as many of these 
full as we can get our hands on. And then we're going to tether the, the wizard. The, hitting the wizard with the tether will drop its shield because obviously match game we need void to do that. So just make sure you don't get pinched by these. You'll see this, they're all over the map. So we'll just hit a quick tether. And then we'll just use our bow. We won't we'll use Ariana's. But normally I just use my bow to do it. <clears throat> so I think there's one acolyte left up. Uh, one thrall left up. And the thrall can be annoying. So we're just going to push up. Try and get, get some ammunition. You see us heavy here. Dodge reload. And I am being very, very careful. Because the thrall can... Thrall coupled with the boss... If I was to have just went up there to get that orb, the thrall coupled with the boss, all I would have needed was one hit from the thrall and then a couple of hits from the boss and I'd have been dead. This run would have been over because I tried to save 30 seconds, 20 seconds or whatever. So now we're just going to push up here. As you can see, I'm super cagey because I, I, this was like my second attempt using this strategy and this is where I died on the first attempt. It was right here because... I tried, I tried to just skim some time off. So you see that, that wizard? That's a Hollywood grenade. But it's not, a, just line the grenade up. But you'll see, no, I don't have a grenade. I'm not going to wait to get another grenade. This, Ariana's Vow can take the shield down. It just takes a heap of shots to do it. And you need to take these wizards down. You need to take them down. Don't try and, that's the wizard's down. You can see, you know, I Hollywooded the first grenade. It was a good grenade, but you don't have to. Ariana's Vow will take the shield down. Just make sure you've got the full ammo. So now what we're doing is <clears throat> we're going to wait for our dodge to come back. Dodge, reload, and then, you know, get. I'm going to go up against the speaker on the right-hand side. It looks like a speaker, and this is where I want a better view of, of the, you know, the platforms so as soon as she stops shooting out there we go i'll dodge reload grab the orb and just as fast as i can get up here and slam turn around and fire off as many of these as i can as you can see i'm i'm in danger of getting killed and there we go that's the run my the way i would have done that differently is i think the only thing I would have done differently is I think you can actually, I, th I don't know if it's 9 or 10 shots that, that Sabathon fires off, but you can wait until maybe she fires like an 8th or ninth, and go and do it like that, time her shots at you. Thank you very much for watching the run. I hope you've enjoyed it. I hope that you guys uh, will come back and watch more runs. Take it easy, guys. Enjoy your solo attempts, and I will see you in the next video.